It seems only natural that the skies over Penn State's Beaver Stadium dress itself up in a sparkling blue and white before taking a seat over the never-ending success story that is Penn State football. Some of the greatest players in college football history have played here, and they've all been coached by Joe Paterno. This stadium is something. 85,000 seats, one of the greatest football stadiums in the country, and I've seen it grow from 30,000 seats. That's what it was when I came here to Penn State. 30,000 to 85,000, and the games have gotten more exciting. There have been so many great football games, so many thrilling moments I've been involved in in this, in this stadium. I've walked the sideline for over 30 years, and I've been thrilled every single Saturday when we get this place packed and the people are excited. And I've seen so many great things done here, and so many great people do them and maybe you'd like to see some of them. Former Penn State players deem much of the credit for the team's success to the academic and athletic demands of head coach Joe Paterno. Get better today, man. Gotta get better. Start to think about being a good football team. We're sure not there yet. Motivation has always been his method. Winning has always been the result. Good job, Hager. Come on, Eddie, be tough out there now. Come on, take off now. Let's go, bro. Come on, John, run. What was the last one you hit, uh, Capoletti? Was that this lug three? Lug oh, two. Yeah, that was a good call. Tell Capoletti he didn't run it right, though. The tradition he's helped build at Penn State is legendary, as are many of the players he's coached. Heisman winners, Super Bowl winners, and a national championship team. This is a look at the coach, and the players who took part in writing the success story that has become a Nittany Lion legacy. I always get excited when I come into, the, into this Hall of Fame room, and particularly when I stand next to the Heisman Trophy and think of John Capoletti, who was such an exciting football player for us here at Penn State. But we've had a lot of exciting ones. Think of Kurt Warner, which was, who was fairly recent, but I go back to Lenny Moore and Charlie Pittman, Bobby Campbell, Franco Harris, Lydell Mitchell, Huffnagel, uh, Fasina, great tight end like Ted Kowalik. So we've had a lot of exciting offensive football players at Penn State, and it's, they've been fun to coach, they've been fun to watch, and uh, as I said, I get all the goose pimples when I come in here and think about those guys and the way they did things. Since his early days at Penn State, Joe Paterno has had talent to work with in the backfield. In the late 60s, Charlie Pittman, number 24, and Bob Campbell, number 23, led Penn State to two consecutive undefeated seasons. Their successors, Franco Harris and Lydell Mitchell, left their fleet marks throughout the record books of Penn State and the National Football League. Franco Harris, number 34, won four Super Bowl rings with the Pittsburgh Steelers. In college, Lydell Mitchell, number 23, led the nation in scoring, and he did the same as a professional with the Baltimore Colts. The 1970s bred powerhouse backfields. 
Mike Gooman, number 24, was drafted by the Los Angeles Rams. And Booker Moore, number 48, was a first round pick of the Buffalo Bills. Matt Suey, number 32, now plays beside Walter Payton in the Chicago Bear backfield. Explosive would best describe the Penn State runners of the 1980s. Jonathan Williams, number 44, was a third round pick of the New England Patriots. It was Williams and Kurt Warner, number 25, who helped Penn State reach the promised land of collegiate football in 1982, a national championship. Now the star of the Seattle Seahawks, Warner rushed for over 100 yards 18 times during his Penn State career, and the Lions won each of those games. The challenge of following this performance has fallen into the hands of DJ Dozier, number 42. But there was one lion running back who reached heights in his collegiate career most can only dream of attaining. Great athlete, great competitor, great poise, in all things and in every way, John Capaletti represents a Heisman Trophy winner. At one point in 1973, John Capaletti had three consecutive 200-yard games on his way to over 1,500 yards rushing for the season. But as good as Capaletti was, he will be best remembered for something he did off the field. He stole a nation's heart with his tearful dedication of the Heisman Trophy to his brother Joey, who was dying of leukemia. Dave Joyner, number 70, was an All-American offensive lineman for the Lions in 1971. Today, there are more former Penn State offensive linemen starting in the National Football League than from any other university. Dave Joyner, Tom Rafferty, John Nessel, Keith Dorney, and Irv Pankey in the 70s gave way to a host of NFL starters in the 80s. Mike Munchak with the Houston Oilers, Jim Romano with the Los Angeles Raiders, Bill Kantz with the Cleveland Browns, Bill Dugan with the Seattle Seahawks, and Ron Heller and Sean Farrell, number 62, with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Over 350 points scored between 1973 and 1978 were credited to one family as the Barr brothers dominated the kicking game. Chris, number 99, and Matt, number 10. Matt Barr will try for a new NCAA record of field goals in one season. Bassett holds, Drzenovich will snap. He has the distance. Quarterback John Huffnagel, number 16, led Penn State to the Sugar Bowl and the Cotton Bowl in the early 70s. He ranks third among all-time Lion passers, but his fleet feet often gained more notoriety than his arm. Chuck Fusina, number 14, was runner-up in the Heisman voting and won the Maxwell Award in 1978. His receiving core of Jimmy Cephalo, number 44, Mickey Schuler, number 82, and Scott Fitzke helped lead the team. 
Scott Fitzke, number 46, became his prime target, as Fusina became Penn State's all-time leading passer. Fitzke and Fusina played together as professionals, taking the stars of the United States Football League to two championships. But it took Todd Blackledge, number 14, and Kenny Jackson, number 82, to make the Lions number one. They, along with Mike McCluskey, Greg Garrity, and Kurt Warner, helped create the most explosive offensive attack Penn State has ever had. Together, they shattered 27 school records. They were also responsible for some of the school's most exciting moments. Finally, on January 1st, 1983, a national championship. Kevin Bell has replaced Kenny Jackson as wide receiver. Off the play action, Blackledge is going to pass. He's throwing deep down the left corner. There he's there. Playing for national power like Penn State means constantly being under the scrutiny of the camera. But much more critical is the scrutiny of head coach Joe Paterno. The love affair between Lion fans and Paterno spans generations. For over 30 years as head coach and assistant, through countless bowl appearances and national rankings, Joe Paterno has been making all the right moves. I get a big kick out of the fans because they just love the offense. But I tell you, when you're a football coach, you live with your defense. You, you, you succeed with your defense. And I'm, I think Penn State through the years has played defense about as well as anybody. And uh, we've had some great, great players. The Mike Reeds and the Bruce Clarks and Matt Millens and Mark Robinson and Jack Camp, some of the great linebackers we've had and other people. And I think the reason we've been able to be consistent is because we believe in defense and we, we're going to try to win football games with our defense. And when we're good doing that, everything else seems to fall into place. Penn State has always taken pride in its defense. In the late 60s, players like Mike Reed, number 68, Steve Smear and Denny Oncott's number 35 began building the reputation of the Paterno defense. Oncott's was the first team All-American selection in 1969, and Smear, number 76, was a second team choice. But the team leader was Mike Reed, number 68. Reed was on every All-America team, was all pro with the Bengals of the NFL, and retired to become a Grammy-winning music writer and producer. Penn State mass-produced defensive stars in the 1970s like Mike Hartenstein, number 79. Hartenstein was a second-round draft pick of the Chicago Bears. 
Randy Crowder, number 53, was chosen Defensive Player of the Year in 1973. He was drafted by the Miami Dolphins, as was Bruce Bannon, number 83. Matt Millen, number 60, and Bruce Clark, number 54, were both All-Americans in 1978. Millen won two Super Bowl rings with the Los Angeles Raiders, and Clark plays for the New Orleans Saints. A starter with the Minnesota Vikings, Walker Lee Ashley, number 37, was the defensive captain of the 1982 championship team. In 1969, All-American choice Neil Smith, number 26, led the team in interceptions. Pete Harris led the nation with 10 steals in 1978. Paul Langford, number 12, was drafted by the Miami Dolphins. Mark Robinson, number 32, anchored the national championship secondary in 1982. He was the defensive star of the Sugar Bowl, grabbing two interceptions and was drafted by the Kansas City Chiefs. But Penn State's reputation for defense has been built by a rather violent breed of linebackers. Men like Ed O'Neill, number 87, a first round pick of the Detroit Lions. All-American Charlie Zapek, number 60. Jack Ham, number 33, a perennial All-Pro and Super Bowl winner with the Pittsburgh Steelers. John Scorpan, number 81, drafted by the Buffalo Bills. Lance Mell and Greg Buttle, number 67, were both drafted by the New York Jets. Kurt Allerman, drafted by the St. Louis Cardinals. Penn State's reputation for linebacking perfection is alive and well in the 80s. Harry Hamilton, number 17, was an academic All-American drafted by the New York Jets. And Scott Radisick, number 97, was a second round choice of the Kansas City Chiefs. They were all starters in the National Football League. All continue in the great tradition built during the paternal years. That tradition grows stronger. It's the players, it's the coach, it's the Nittany Lion legacy. You know, tradition is a great word, football tradition in particular. Uh, it denotes a lot of things to a lot of people. At a Penn State, it denotes pride and a consistency over a long period of time. Uh, it it deno denotes the excellence, because we've had a chance to be national champions legitimately five years in the last uh, 20 years. 68 and 69 were undefeated, 73 were undefeated, uh, 78 we had that tough ball game with Alabama, and then of course we won the national championship in 82, so we're very, very proud of our tradition, and uh, it means an awful lot to us, and uh, we, we aim to, to continue the great tradition we've had in Penn State football. Three, two, one, Penn State National Champion! Penn State is a national champion! to this football team. What a tribute to his coach.